and today I'm going to be presenting Leonardo da Vinci's Armored Car. Uh, it is a uh, Renaissance era car, so it actually didn't have an engine, of course. It was human powered, or by theory, it was human powered. Uh, it would require uh, six army personnel to uh, uh, manage the wheels of it, and six normal civilians couldn't have done it because they're not strong enough. Uh, this uh, armored shell right here, it's at an angle, so it, that better deflects the uh, any oncoming uh, artillery, or well, not artillery, uh, gunfire and also was uh, immune to knives, swords, uh, arrows, even professional uh, British arrows. Uh, and all of that is all nice and good, but what I'm going to emphasize on here is the cannons of this thing. First of all, notice that the cannons are in a circular uh, uh, they're all around the uh, perimeter of the uh, device here. And that's so uh, it can actually fire in all directions because it had so little maneuverability. It's like turn five degrees in 20 minutes. That's not very good maneuverability, in my opinion. Uh, and how these uh, cannons work is by black powder. That's basically the only means of propelling cannonballs they had back in the Renaissance era, which is when this device would have been produced. Uh, and black powder has two means of uh, propelling objects. <coughs> the initial explosion itself and also the expanding gases that that produces. Those are the two names. Uh, and how physically how this happens is there's this thing in physics called potential energy and in this particular case chemical potential energy. Uh, if uh, all sorts of uh, chemicals have uh, all sorts of stats that go along with it. One of those stats is what they simply call energy. What this is is chemical potential energy when it reacts with something else. And if you do the math, uh, the theoretical kinetic energy produced by uh, the reaction of gunpowder uh, is one, uh, 180 kilonewtons, which is enough to propel a uh, 20 kilogram ball a good mile, mile and a half. Uh, and the uh, kinetic energy, which I've just mentioned, is the energy of motion. You throw this metal ball, that's kinetic energy. Uh, so that reaction produces active chemical energy, which produces kinetic energy in the ball. And if the ca uh, camera woman would stay clear of the oh, shot, which radius. way is it going? <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I I, I want to get it. So this way is okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a good uh, good safety tip. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and like, and hopefully no one comes out of the. Uh, you want somebody to stay down there? Or something. Yeah. That's okay. That I think I think we'll be okay. Is it? And it's not going to hit any glass, right? This is correct. I've already okay. tempted it. 
and this produces a motion kind of similar to this. And the reason why it's straight like that oh, great. is because the cannons are trapped by both halves of the armor. It can only stay straight. It cannot be angled up or down. So it has to be straight. So this is the only motion that it can feasibly have. And scale that up to a mile and a half. And an uh, oncoming uh, army. Uh, this would have been a good invention uh, for after the invention of the telescope because the telescope would have allowed you to see armies that far away much better. Uh, so, what, what, do you know the year for the, the car? Because the telescope was 400 years ago uh, uh, in 2007. Uh, the uh, telescope was mid 1600s. The armored car was about 1500, give or take mm. a decade. So they did. They did have it. So could, do you want to tell about your brochure? Brochure. Ah, uh, yes, the brochures. My brochure. This is. By the way, author's copy, so it's not folded. <laughs> Amy, get to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, what else did I want to... Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Just yeah, re recap. Kind of yeah, the main physics points. Uh, but okay. Also, the this, this, uh, canons of this would, uh, would have taken advantage of the conservation of energy law of physics which says for any system, the human body, uh, that TV, that camera phone, the cannons of this armored car, everything, has the same amount of energy going in as it produces. There cannot be a gain or loss of energy. Energy can only be uh, converted from one form to another, like potential chemical energy to chemical kinetic energy to material kinetic energy. Uh, uh, and this takes advantage of this with all three of those steps, because well, there is no heat loss or no energy loss. Uh, some energy uh, is emitted to the environment through heat. That's loss of effective energy, but it's not a loss in total energy. It's just loss to the surroundings. Uh, uh, and that's pretty much the summary of the physics of the canons of Leonardo da Vinci's armored tank. Does anybody uh, have any questions? Uh, well, before I answer questions, uh, I just want to mention uh, if any of you want. Uh, like all the full details, chemistry or physics or math on any aspect of the canons of this uh, machine, uh, you can email me at any time, chemistry.security at gmail.com. Uh, that email is in the brochure. Uh, again, that's chemistry.security at gmail.com for those of you watching at home. <laughs> uh, and if you have any questions, uh, 
uh, at home, feel free to email me. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it then right here. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay.